First John chapter 2. Now you're going to make me preach, aren't you? First John chapter 2. I've got some things that are in this that uh, you're probably not going to like. Okay? And again, I want to say to you, I'm not preaching down to anybody. Okay? I'm not. I'm not telling you that I've got everything fixed in my life and I'm high and mighty above you and all that. Okay? So I don't want you to think that I'm coming down on you. But there's, our ways are not right before the Lord. Amen? Our ways are not right before the Lord. And we have to realize that there's too much of this world that we really love. While we say, amen, oh, I, I hate this world. Truth of it is, we crave this world. There are parts of this world that I crave. And I hate it. I want nothing to do with it. I would rather, if I had my choice today, I'm like Paul, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain. Okay? It'd be, more, it'd be better for him to go to heaven, he said, but it's much more expedient that I'm down here preaching. But I hate this world, and I hate the fact that I like things in this world, and I don't want any part of it. But what I'm going to say this morning applies to me just as much as it applies to you. Do you think there should be a different standard for the preacher than there is for the congregation? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay? I think if it's wrong for the preacher, it's wrong for everybody else. Okay? So I just want you to keep that in mind that I'm not trying to beat anybody up and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to pinpoint people and embarrass anybody. All right, I don't like I don't like doing that. I don't think I do it, and I'm not going to do it today. Okay, but I've preached this message before. It's been a few years ago, and I'm preaching it a little bit different. But the end result is going to be the same. I'm going to put some things up on the screen that's going to be real easy to identify whether or not it is of God or of this world. Is that fair enough? Okay, it's going to be real easy for us to spot the world and spot God working, all right? 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. In fact, let's do this. I don't do this very often, but I want to do this. I want to stand in reverence to God's Word. In the book of Ezra, they stood. Ezra stood up behind a pulpit of wood, and he opened the book, and they stood in reverence to God's Word. Okay? And again, I don't, I don't, there's some preachers do that every service. I'm not, that's fine. We don't because, I mean, I, if we stood every time I put a verse up on the screen, we'd be standing. Amen. But I want us to stand in, and you're saying that you agree with what God says here. Even if you don't agree with me, you agree with what God says here. All right. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world. The love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now, I want to ask you the question. Number one, do you believe what God said? Say amen. amen. Number two, this is not for you to, to shout out or say anything out loud. This is for you, between you and God. Because I don't want anybody boasting. Is there anything in your life that is trying to hold you back from serving God? Is there anything in this world that right now you're afraid to give up? Is there anything in this world that, how can I say this, that ruins your testimony as a believer in Jesus Christ and a believer in the Bible? Is there anything that's part of your life that is worldly, that destroys your testimony? People say, well, you're a Christian, when, and yet you're doing this, or you say this, or you're part of this, or whatever it is. Is there anything like that in your life that destroys your testimony that you're a Christian, you believe the Bible, and you believe what the Bible says about life, all right? 
I want you to think about that, and I want you to ask that question. I don't want you to ask it to me, and I'm not going to ask you. You ask God. God, is there something in my life? God, is there something that you're trying to tell me about? God, show it to me today. Whether you show it to me through Pastor Mike or you just show it to me through your Holy Spirit, God, you show me today what is keeping me from, from wanting to live the right kind of life. What is keeping me? What, what, was it, what, what is it that the devil could use against me to want me to hold on to this world a little longer instead of be right with you and go to heaven? Okay? Now, here's your chance to pray for Pastor Mike, okay? Because I ain't kidding you. I'm just feeling that there's a hesitancy, and it's just all over me, all right? So you pray for me, all right? Heavenly Father, come to you today, and I thank you, dear God, for Jesus. I thank you for this Bible. I thank you for what it says and what it means. And I pray, dear God, Lord, there's a battle going on right now, and it's, Lord, it's all over me. It was all over me last night. And Lord, I don't know what it is, but you do. You see things that I don't see. You know things that I don't know. And uh, Father, I'm just asking God that you do some good things in these people. Lord, these people have come here to this place asking for bread, asking for the way of life, asking, dear God, that, that they have a meeting with you. And Lord, I am not capable of delivering such a grand thing this morning. I'm not capable this morning, God, of stirring their hearts. I'm not capable this morning of bringing chills up and down their spine. I'm not capable, Lord, of drawing an emotional response out of anybody this morning. And I'm not sure, Lord, that I'm capable of even preaching your word today. So, Father, I'm asking, God, that you just step in here, take over, and preach the message. God, that you do it in such a way, Lord, as, as you, it will draw glory to you. People will praise you. People will thank you. Father, I appreciate, Lord, at times when people thank me and tell me that that was a good message and they really needed it. And Father, I appreciate that. But, Lord, sometimes, Lord, I think I'm guilty of stealing the credit away from you. Father, forgive me for that, Lord. If, if anybody, Lord, has anything to say about anything that you've done in this message, God, let it be towards you. Father, I just ask you, God, Lord, for your help and for your grace. I pray, Lord, that you'd minister to these people today. I pray it in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Uh, let, me, uh, let me go here. I told you to study. Take your Bible turn to Matthew 13. I told you to study Matthew 13. Did I not tell you to do? You may be seated, by the way. Sit down. I know we're going to read some more verses, but I don't want you to stand for every one of them. Amen. Did I tell you to study Matthew 13? Does anybody remember that? Did I say that? Well, I should have said it. So there. Matthew chapter 13 has a lot to say about the love of this world and what it will do to you. In Matthew 13, we have several parables that Jesus taught, one of which was the parable of the seed and the sower. And you've heard me teach on this many times. I will probably go back to it many times again in the future. To me, Matthew 13 and Mark 4, and I can't remember where the other one is in the book of Luke, they're parallel passages, and they really, to me, they really explain the, the condition of a person's life uh, there are those who don't want to go to heaven and are not going to heaven. There are those who pretend they want to go to heaven, but really they, they, want, both, they want both the world and they want, to, they want to look good in church and they want the world at the same time. And I'm here to tell you that doesn't work. I tried it. And everybody else here has tried it too. I'm telling you, we tried it and it doesn't work. If you want God, you let go of the world. If you want the world, you let go of God because you're not going to drag God, God down to, to your level. Amen? It's not going to happen. And so anyway, uh, Matthew 13 is a, is a great place to study on this thing. And this parable right here where he talks about this thing, out of these four groups, one of them and only one of them goes to heaven. They are the ones who God bears fruit in their life. 
They are the people where the seed was sown upon good ground in their life and the stony ground, the unplowed up ground, the fallow ground of their life did not prohibit God's Word in their life and the thorns and the briars did not choke out God's Word. I don't know if you saw, I put up a YouTube video this week of me pulling them stupid thorns out of my flower garden. I hate those things. Hate them. Now, every time I reach for one, I don't have a pair of gloves on. Every time I reach for one, I go, ow, mm, mm, stupid things. Pull them out. Get rid of them. Because I see that in my life. And I see my responsibility in my life of being in my life every day watching for where the thorn's coming up next. And when I find them, I'm going to pull them out, get rid of them. Because I know, how number one, how ugly they are. I know how painful they are. And I know that they will, they have served nothing but to choke out the Word of God and the good things that God wants in my life. They will do it to, listen, I know they'll do it to me, so I know they'll do it to you too. Because I'm not any different than you are. So in Matthew 13, 22, he talks about those who have thorns in their life. He that also receives seed among thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. And I've said this many, many times. Those things in your life that are unfruitful, God takes them and He cuts them off and He casts them into the fire. How would you like to be cast in there with them? I don't know about you, but I got saved because I did not want to go to hell. And I'm telling you this day, I do not want to go to hell. I do not want to go to hell when I die. God can take everything away from me. God can take my health away from me. God can take everything in this world away from me. As long as I don't have to die and go to hell, I'll be satisfied. I want to tell you something. This world and the love of this world and the things that you're trying to hang on to will choke out the Word of God in your life. They will choke out the power of God in your life. And when they do that, you stop being fruitful. You'll stop being fruitful as a, as a man. You'll stop being fruitful as a woman. You'll stop being fruitful as a, as, a, as a child. You'll stop being fruitful as a church member. I don't know about you. I know you love this church, and I, know I love this church, and I want this church. I want God to bless this church, and I want, God, I want God in each and every person sitting here. I want God to be able to bear fruit in your life. But as long as the cares of this world are choking out his... Every time the preacher preaches, whether it's me, Mike Hutzel, Reg Kelly, or anybody that I bring in here, every time the preacher preaches, that worldliness in your life is contradicting what the Word of God is saying to you. And there are some things that are part of your life that should not be there. Shouldn't be there. Because they choke out the word. Down in verse 38, look there in your Bible. This is the parable of the, the, uh, the good seed and the tares. The man went out and planted good seed. Good seed is the word of God. Once again, we're dealing with the word of God. Good seed are God's people where the word of God has been sown in their life. Good, a good seed is a marriage where the Word of God exists inside of a biblical, godly marriage. I want to ask you a question this morning. Is your marriage right before God? Is your marriage right before God? Okay? And if it's not, something's not right there. There's bad seed there. Can get an Amen. This may not be for you, may be for some people online. Okay? If not, there is some bad seed there. And you need to let God divide up what's bad and get it out of the way for you. How about that? Amen? Verse 38, Matthew 13, The field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. I want to ask you a question. Do you have friends that are lost? Now, I'm not saying you have acquaintances. I'm talking about buddies you hang with. He'll be all right. I'm talking about acquaintances. Okay? I'm talking about people that you're hooked in with. People that you're following. 
online. Okay? They will influence you. They will, if you, listen, oh boy, I don't, I don't want to be mean. If you fell for this September 23rd rapture deal, who, you find out whoever it was that sent you that garbage and cut them off. Block their emails, cut them off from Facebook, disconnect them from YouTube, or maybe you just need to call the internet company and say, come out and cut the cable for me. I don't need this thing anyway. I'm, I'm falling for too much garbage. Lost, huh? Oh, good grief. So it's today now? Today's the 24th, right? Well, I'm going to quit preaching then. Go ahead. That's what I think is going to... I'm right there with you, Ian. He's gathering. He's going to gather the wicked first. Not the saved first, okay? I appreciate that. That's good. That helps me. You guys are with it, all right? You, got, you know the Bible. Just read, listen, read your Bible and go home. The tares are the children of the wicked one, okay? At some point, God, listen, God's going to separate us whether we want to be separated or not. God's going to separate you. God's going to start cutting out things in your life that are, got, that are ungodly, that are worldly, and he's going he's gonna to bring you to a place. Because he loves you, God is going to force you to live in a godly manner. Because everybody that's of this world is going to try to destroy you and hurt you. And you're going to realize that. You're going to realize that you are better off without him. Amen. So he said, the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. You think about this now. These are not just things that all that I, I've got them in my life. They don't really do any harm. I mean, I don't do them in church, but they don't harm anybody. They they're not really that bad. Listen, if they're worldly, they offend. All things that offend. Who do they offend? God. God said, I don't like them. They're contrary to what I say. Them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There should be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. With it. Let him hear. Who hath ears to hear these things? These things that are in your life that you love, that... that I've just got some things in my mind. I've got some pictures I'm going to put up on the screen that are, that are worldly things that we like, that I like. And I hate them. And there's a reason why we do them. Some of it is entertainment related. Some of it is outward appearance. And don't give me this stuff, well, God doesn't look on the outside. No, but man does. God calls us to live modestly. God calls us men to look like men and act like men and appear as men and cut our hair like men. God calls ladies to look like ladies and act like ladies and be like lady, be ladylike everywhere you go. And dress in a certain way, dress modestly. Now, I may not, as your pastor, I have not ever sat and defined what modesty is, but we all know it when we see it, don't we? We know what modesty is and we know what immodesty is, don't we? Okay? Somebody come and rescue me. John 3.19 this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. You see, what's been, you see what it means to be part of the world? It means that you love darkness rather than light. This is why, this why churches have closed off all the windows 
and they turn all the lights off in the sanctuary. You, you, think I'm, you think I'm kidding? You think I'm making this up? That is evidence to me that that church loves darkness more than light. You see this, see this room in here? It's, it's very well lit, isn't it? And it's, we're going to keep it that way. We're going to keep all the lights on. We're not going to turn them off because we love light. I want to say this to you. You might think I'm meddling, but I'm telling you, God's people, unless you work a shift that requires you to work all night, God's people love to get up in the morning when the light comes on. Don't lay in bed all day. Except for Matthew sometimes or Ryan or some of these guys that have to work a late shift, all right? That's, that's, I get it. I get it, all right? But I'm just saying it is indicative. It, you, you look at a lot of these teenage boys. In fact, teenage boys, nothing. These 20-year-old boys and 25-year-old boys and 30-year-old boys still living at mom's house, sleeping all, sleeping all day, staying up all night playing video games. It's because they love darkness more than light because their deeds are evil. The world is full of darkness and however much attachment you have to the world, that's how much the darkness affects you. It's a constant battle going to go on in your flesh about how much darkness you're going to let in and how much light you're going to let in. Okay? John 7, verse 7. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. So anything where you love, you're loving the world or you're loving part of the world or you have worldly things in your life, those things hate God. And they hate God's Word. And they're in contradiction to the Word and the Bible that we all stand on in this church. I mean, let's face it. This church is all about one thing. It's all about the Bible. Amen? There it is. That's our, ch that's our whole church. We're all here because we all agree that's the Word of God. And what it says, it says. And we all agree that what it says, that's what it says. We abide by it. Amen. Whatever part of your life is part of this world hates this book. And doesn't want anything. To, and there's things that can be preached that in your flesh, your flesh is going to say, I don't like that. There's been things that I've preached and I've heard preached that my flesh did not like. But the older I get, the more I hate this flesh. And I'm learning not to listen to my flesh. Okay? That's not easy. I get it. It is not easy. But I hate it. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. If it's worldly people, it's not just innocent. It's evil. Okay? John 12, 25, He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. There will be no name it, claim it preaching done out of this church. There will be no wealth and prosperity in healing gospels. There will be no, not, there will be no self help uh, preaching. There will be no how you can have a better life here. That's not what we're here for. I know God loves us, and I know God makes a better way of life for us. If you live God's rules and God's ways, you just have a better life. Amen? But it's not this life that we're worried about. It's the next one. I didn't get saved because I wanted to get rich. I didn't get saved because I wanted a healthy body. I did not decide to follow Christ because I wanted to be successful in what I did for, and, and make a good living. What I, what I got saved for was because I was looking ahead into the future and knew that I was going to hell and knew that I did not want to go there. That's the life that you've got to worry about. Not this one. God will take care of this one. The life that you've got to worry about is the one that's coming. Amen? That's the one you've got to worry about. John 12, 31. Now, this, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Now, hang on here. Who's your prince? Is it the prince of peace? Or the prince of the power of the air, the, children, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Who's your prince? 
No man can serve two masters. Okay? Worldly things in our life that we love is us trying to serve two princes, two masters. And it doesn't work. You try it. In fact, this is your challenge this week. Try to live half of, the, half of your day for the world and half the day for God. <laughs> Sister Betty's going, no, don't do it. <laughs> Amen. John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. You know what worldliness in your life does? It does block out the truth. And it cannot receive the spirit. What we try to do, what I see, what, what I see churches do, and I was going to do this. I was, man, I hate to talk about this. I was going to do this here. And poor Sister Waymire and Sister Bernice were saying, over our dead bodies, you're going to do it, all right? Because I ain't kidding you. I just decided that we needed to honor them, and I won't get into that. But anyway, I was going to bring a lot of worldliness into this church. Because there was a lot of worldliness in my life at the time. And I'm just telling you, what we try to do is that they're trying to bring the world into the church and then trying to get the Spirit of God to move through that. There's churches, people, that are playing, and I'm not making this up, they're playing ACDC hard rock music in their church service before the preaching. Hard rock and roll music. And they're doing it they're trying to get, they're trying to say, well, this kind of goes along with the sermon and it's something they can attach to. Now, now God's going to move in their life. That's a lie. The Spirit can't, the Spirit, the world cannot receive the Spirit of God. They don't work together. Amen? The world cannot receive because it sees Him not, neither, does, neither knoweth Him, but you know Him, for He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Man, I got a lot of verses to give you. John 15, 18, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. And I, I want to ask you a question. Who are you trying to get to love you? Are you trying to get the world to look at you and the world to notice you? Young people, listen to pastor. Don't fall for the lie of trying to please the world. Don't try to be popular with the world or anybody who's lost. Don't try it. It won't pay off. You adults, anybody here who is close personal friends with anybody you went to high school with, raise your hand. Well, that didn't go so well as I thought, but there's not one person that I tried to suck up to in high school that me and him are buddies right now, and I mean Bosom buddies, not one. They all, and I tried to friend them on Facebook. They won't even give me the time of day. And I'm talking about guys that I hung with every day. Once they took one, I guess once they took one look at me on the internet, they just went, boy, he's went nuts. Okay? The world hate you. You know it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. John 16, 33, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Everything that you're trying to do in the world is only going to cause you trouble. That's what tribulation is. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Romans 12, turn there in your Bibles. It's a difference between two words, and both of them have the word form in it. Form. Form is what it looks like. I can draw a doodle up on the screen or do a little hand puppet and you could say, well, that's the form of an eagle or that's the form of a man or the form of this. Everybody follow what I'm saying, right? We, we look at things and we, we recognize the form that they have. And I'm just, I want to ask you the question, what form are you presenting to people? Are you presenting the form of someone who is saved, born again, a child of the living God, 
living a holy and a clean life or are you presenting to this lost world the form of someone who is just as bad as they are? Because when your neighbors, when your neighbors know you get up and go to church every Sunday and they see the Bud Light boxes out at the trash can on trash day, They hear the music that you're playing on cleaning day. They hear the fights that are going on in the house late at night. They're not, listen, they're not deceived. They're not stupid. You try to present to them that you go to church and you're a good person, but they know that you bear in you a different form. And then you try to say, won't you come to church with us Sunday? They don't want anything to do with you and your church. Not a thing. Romans 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Do not take on the form of this world. But be ye transformed. Con means with. Trans means changed. You're going to bear the form of the world or the form of someone who is different than the world. Someone who God has changed. And I know what it's like to struggle with the issues of life and, boy, I want this changed, but I can't do it. I know what that's like. Let God change you then. If you can't do it, let God do it for you. By the renewing of your mind. You know how you renew your mind? Read your Bible. Your mind's got full of junk. You need to have it washed out. They'd say that Mike Hoggard, he's brainwashing those people. Well, number one, that is an insult to you guys. Because they're saying you're so stupid as you can't see past my lies. Number two, it says I'm stupid. But listen, if our mind is full of this world, it needs to be washed. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 1 Corinthians one twenty. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? A worldly person will dispute God's word. A worldly person will dispute God's word. Amen? Alright, now I'm getting down to it. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world. What kind of spirit is the spirit of the world? Is everything okay, Matthew? It's the feed, and it's the YouTube feed in my office. You can shut, you can shut that door there. No, that's good. Don't go shooting anything in my office, okay? Don't, don't kill anything that's working in my office, all right? I appreciate that. You know what the spirit of the world is? Babylon. She's a harlot. You know what she'll do? She'll drink like a harlot. She'll talk like a harlot. Are you listening? The spirit of this world drinks and gets drunk like a harlot. Or smokes like a harlot. Gets high like a harlot. Does drugs. Takes drugs. She talks like a harlot. She talks dirty. Question that I have is, does anybody hearing my voice talk dirty to other people? Either like on a job site, and just words are just flying out of your mouth when you're on a job site working with other men or other ladies. Or maybe chat online, do you talk dirty? Do you use dirty words? Do you use foul language? Are you, uh, what is it, sexting somebody? You don't have the Spirit of God in you. You got a harlot, wicked, foul mouthed spirit. God dealt with me one time years ago over my mouth. I picked up some words and was using them at school, and God dealt with me about it. I just don't think you ought to say certain words. 
Amen? That's the, that's the kind of talk the spirit of this world does. The spirit of this world drinks, talks dirty, and she's a whore. She's filthy in everything that she does. And she hates the Bible, and she hates the church, and she hates preaching on right things and holy living. She hates it. Okay? She dresses wickedly. She appeals to the lust of this world. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And the thing to ask yourself is, Pastor, you're saying a lot of this stuff, and boy, I just don't know. I, some of this stuff I don't, I don't seem to have a problem with. And maybe you're just kind of making this up. I'm just going to ask you to judge everything that I say up against the Word of God. Okay? Now, I'm going to make this real simple. And I'm going to put some things up on the screen, all right? And it's going to be pictures. And you're going to say whether they are worldly or whether they are godly. And you're going to do it out loud. Okay? And hope we don't get into a dogfight where half of them say, that's godly. No, that's worldly. But it's, it's just real simple stuff. Okay? Are we ready? Number one. Is it worldly or godly? Godly. Going to church. Singing the old hymns. Worshiping the Lord. That's godly. Amen? The world doesn't want to do that. That's why they're not here. The world doesn't want to do that. So it's godly to do that. It's not wor and it shouldn't be worldly. We should not mix worldliness in with godliness. Amen. All right. Here's the next one. Worldly or godly? It's godly. To pray. Little children, to pray. Amen? Pray everywhere, the Bible says. Who, did you know that there is not a rule where you guys go to school that you cannot pray? And if you ever, if you ever pray at school and get in trouble, call me. Because I will bring a can of King James down, a 55-gallon drum of it, and tell them that if the sodomites can parade around in the school, so can the prayer warriors. Amen? Amen. It's godly. Godly. Read your Bible. King, at this King James Bible. Read it. Amen. What was it that you misunderstood about that? Do what? Oh, just it's a King James. You know I wouldn't... I'm not trying to trip you up here. I'm making it obvious here. here. You can leave anytime you want to, all right? No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. All right, next one. Worldly or godly? Here we go. You shouldn't have read it then. And you shouldn't have went to see the movie. You shouldn't have read it. And you shouldn't have went to watch the movie. Because Romans, Romans 1. Since i am got a can of King James here. Romans 1 says... Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. There's some things that you probably shouldn't go watch anymore. Things you shouldn't see anymore. Things you shouldn't read anymore. And I am not preaching down to you. I couldn't. I'm not going to be one of these preachers that makes it like you're all wrong and I'm right all the time. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Standard book of spells. Is that worldly or godly? 
You'll find books like this in public school libraries. Kids, stay away from it. Don't do it. Don't go after it. Amen? Worldly or godly? These things are wicked. It's wicked. Are they worldly or godly? God said, don't print these things on your skin. God said, don't do it. Worldly or godly? Ladies, there is a way to dress. And I have not, in all the years that I've been pastoring here, I have not just nailed it down. I want to see all you ladies wearing this and wearing this and wearing this and wearing this. And if I catch you outside not wearing any of these things, I'm going to, boy, I'm going to get you. I don't do that. I would rather you ask God to show you what to wear. Amen? Worldly or godly? It's worldliness. There's a death spirit in a lot of these kids, and there's a harlot spirit in a lot of these girls and boys walking around. Modesty goes for boys as well as it goes for young ladies. You boys, you wear you some pants that hide and cover yourself. Amen? Is that worldly or godly? That's wicked. It's wicked to go around showing your panties to everybody. And it just, I want to just grab them and pull them all the way up to their shoulders. So that's worldly, right? I'm going to say something. I don't think you ought to wear these if you're not going to cover yourself up. Worldly or godly? Worldly or godly? Worldly or godly? Godly. Worldly or godly? Worldly. It's wicked. Worldly or godly? Godly. It's worldly. By the way, I can't remember. I I picked the top country song, and I I can't remember who that guy is, but he's like the top. Got the number one song. See this right here? That's beer can. Just because it's country, they don't make it right. You want to say that again? Just because it's country, that don't make it right. It's worldly. What do they sing about? Bars and whoring around, going from... Drinking and going from bed to bed, and now they throw a little country talk in there, God and country talk in there, but they mix the world in with God. That that that's two fountains trying to that's a fountain trying to put out sweet and bitter water at the same time, and it doesn't work. That's worldliness. Turn to James chapter four, and I'm going to let you go. James chapter 4. You 
See why I didn't want to preach this? You see why? I didn't want to. I still don't want to. James chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. That's talking to church people. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? How many here admit that you have a spirit in you that lusts after worldly things? Raise your hand. I will raise my hand first. Okay? I've got a spirit in me that lusts to envy, and I hate it. I hate it. But he giveth more grace, verse 6, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Now here's your remedy. Those of you that have that spirit, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Submit to God. If God said it, submit to it. That means be under His authority in what He says. Where authority is, is protection, is there not? When you're under the authority of the law, you're under the protection of the law. When you're under the authority of God, you're under God's protection. When you're under the authority of the Word of God, the Word of God is your shield and your protector. Is it not? Submit to God. Resist the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Look at that. That is us. Double-minded. Wanting it both ways. Wanting to have fun in the world, live in the world, do worldly things and act worldly ways and say worldly things, go worldly places, and then come to church on Sunday and sing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound. That's double-mindedness. If you hate yourself on, my, on Sunday, you ought to hate yourself Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Amen. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. Amen. That's good. You see, worldliness is haughtiness. It's about pride. It's about wanting to be part of something that God says, I don't want you part of anymore. Because one of these days, God's going to destroy the world and everything that's in the world. And if you're hung on to the things in the world... You get destroyed with it. It'll take you down. You're on the Titanic, people, and it's going down. You stay on there, you're going to go down with it. That's where the world's going. The world's going to hell. I don't want to go with them. And I, There's certainly enough of this world that I don't want to be associated with. Amen? If any of them Cardinal baseball players start taking a knee during the National Anthem, I'm out. I will burn my cardinal stuff. I won't, I won't have anything to do with them ever again. And maybe I shouldn't because of the beer stuff. I don't know. But I'm just saying to you, the world's going down, and the more you love God, and the more you love this Bible, the more you will hate this world because you know what it does to you. The world in me does things to me that I don't like, and I don't have control over it. Okay? And I know, that, I know that it's that way with you. I know it is. Because I'm just the same as you guys. Let's bow our heads for prayer. I want you to stay seated where you are. I want you to bow your head. I want you to pray.